everybody, I'm Joey, and I have some fun cards to show you tonight. We're going to make a really beautiful card using water, watercolor, water painters are called for watercoloring. So before we get started, I'm just getting myself up on my iPad here so I can see what you're seeing. So I'm looking away from the camera for just a minute. Let's see if I can see myself coming up not yet oh there we go okay perfect and also i am on my uh, laptop here too as well if you're watching on youtube thank you so much for watching as well and i would love for you to subscribe to my channel i haven't had it going very long um, and it would really help me if you would subscribe to it and um, i've been posting my facebook live videos to youtube so um I'll get started making just uh, dedicated YouTube videos, but that's my next step and I'm working on that. So we'll get there. All right, so people are joining, that looks good. Um, I'm looking at, down, whoops, sorry, down on my Facebook and, okay, perfect. So people are jumping on, that's great. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the phone down and, uh, we'll get started. I've got some cute cards to show you first. My head's going to be really close to the camera. I'm putting my iPad in my stand that's on my camera stand. So let's go ahead and get started. Hang on. I'm going to point my phone down and then we'll get going. So hang on a second. Here we go. Here's the little, I'll be going upside down and then you'll be right side up. Okay, there we go. I think we're good. Alrighty, so I've got a lot of stuff going on here on my desk because for watercoloring you kind of need a lot of stuff. So let's see, <laughs> trying to get situated here. Uh, while people are jumping on, I've got some cards to show you. Uh, these were the cards my team made last night. So these are the new Stampin' Up! in colors if you're not familiar uh, with Stampin' Up! Uh, we Every year we have five new colors that uh, join our family, our four families, our four, yeah, our four families of colors uh, for two years, and we retire one group every year as well. So we made these last night. This is a cute little stamp set um, with a little birdie called Songbirds, Sweet Songbirds, and then there's a matching punch. Um, and they, we had a lot of fun making these last night, so I thought I would share those with you. And then um, also, I've got my team swap cards here to show you. So um, we, so I have quite a few on my team. Uh, not everyone is here in Lincoln. I live in Lincoln, Nebraska. But I thought I'd um, show you. We had a meeting with those who live nearby last night, and actually some joined us on Zoom as well last night. But this is a little card that is a little is um uh, it looks harder than it is but it's a little pop-up card with those cute little birdies that i just showed you this is a i would call it a um, multi easel card because we do easel cards where you just have one panel pop up and hook onto something but this one shows all three hopefully you can see that in the camera so that was one of our cards last night and then um, this is another one. This is a whole group of papers that has these big flowers in it. And that was another one. It has some new purple gems on it, which I thought really set it off. And then, hi Pam, thanks for joining. Uh, this is a new stamper we have that joined our team and she made these beautiful tulips with the kind of um, shaded ends of the tulips, what am I trying to say? She just used the sponge and put a little bit darker color on. I think I'm kind of out of the camera. Let me, let me make sure I'm getting in the camera. Um, and then we've got, hi Diane. We've got this one. This one is made with a new bundle that also has a coordinating punch. And this is this little bottle. I don't know if you can see it, but uh, those are like little, like the glass beads you would see in a bouquet that would come from a florist. Um, a paper hug from me. 
So I thought that one's really cute too. This also uses new ink colors. And then this one, hi Christy. Oh no, you're not late, I was late too. Uh, this one uses, I thought this was so creative using uh, just strips, triangle strips. And then she die cut this with uh, the center out with what's called the diorama dies. They're kind of nested dies and, and then um, another flower die from another set in the middle. And then her little greeting here, but I thought that turned out really sweet too. So those are some of the cards that we, we swapped with last night. Okay, we are going to uh, enter into a subject that not every stamper um, gets into because we have a lot of ways to color and some other ways don't have quite as many steps as what I'm gonna go through with you tonight. But I wanted to show you this way because it's one of my favorite ways actually and it's really the only medium we have that really does look like watercolor um and that's for the fact that it really is the only watercoloring that we do as watercoloring as such and now i'm looking here oh gosh i couldn't see my packet of supplies i get i have everything ready in the morning for the facebook live the, the day that i do it and then I get down here and I can't find anything. I'm in my downstairs studio. We have a walkout basement. And right now there's a lot of light down here, which is nice too because of summer coming. Okay, this is stays on ink. This is important to know about because with watercoloring, you really need stays on ink, not memento black, which is a typical uh, water-based ink that we do a lot of our other coloring methods with. But stays on is really necessary when you're actually gonna use water. Then we're also going to use our water painters. These come in a set of three. They're in our annual catalog. If you need an annual catalog, and if you don't have a demonstrator, let me know. Just If you're on YouTube, just comment in the comments that you'd like to have a catalog and I'll be in touch with you. If you're on Facebook, you can just direct message me. But they come, they've got three tips. They come in one package and there's one with kind of a long tapered tip and then there's one with uh, a fat, kind of a big, like almost like a paintbrush that you would use for like swashing on background color, things like that. So that's another one that we have. And then we have also a smaller tip. So this one is a little bit shorter than the first one I showed you and just a little bit smaller in general. This is the one we're gonna use the most of tonight. Now I actually have filled this one with water since we were going to use it and oddly enough they screw backwards so this is normally the way we screw something on and that's the way it screws off but you just screw off the cap and then you fill it with water and then you're good to go oops going to, so then to, to close it back up you also have to screw it the opposite way that we normally screw things on so we're going to take that then um we're going to go ahead and stamp first and let those images just have a moment to dry or so. So let me... Um, hi, Christy, thank you. Um, let me pull out my stamps. We're going to use two different stamp sets tonight. So one is called Good Feelings. I got this one for free for participating in a virtual event that Stampin' Up! offered. Um, and so we're going to use this stamp out of this set. I like large greetings. It's kind of nice sometimes to have the greeting be the focal point. And then we're going to use this one called Happiness of Bounds. This is a photopolymer stamp set, meaning that it's clear. The stamps are clear. Um, and then it has a set of dies that go with it. So we're going to use these dies, several of these dies tonight. And with that we're going to go ahead and get started so those are what i'm using by the way i will have a complete uh, i'll have a link to the complete project list in the description of the video uh, but it won't be until after i edit the video tonight so if you're watching on youtube it will already be up in the description of the video so so you're good to go but on facebook it takes me a few minutes to actually um, edit the video and get the title in and the links in. So let me go ahead and 
We're gonna stamp this little rose. Let's see, let's stamp it down here. Um, now it stays on ink, it's a solvent ink, so it's, um, it takes it, I don't know if that's the right word, solvent ink, it's a sticky ink at least. So you need to actually let it sit on your cardstock just a few extra minutes. Um, and I'm actually going to restamp that. The other thing you have to remember to do is make sure you get it inked really, really, really well. And I might pull out my, um, this is called a stamp and pierce mat, which is kind of messy. Every Facebook Live, I think I gotta remember to switch that paper out so it isn't so messy. But um, this kind of a pad underneath your photopolymer stamps will help you get a better image. Uh, they just are a little bit softer rubber than our red rubber ones. And again, I'm kind of leaving it on the cardstock long enough for it to root the ink to really sink in. Now when you're stamping with, um, when you're stamping with black memento, you don't have to really give it time to dry because it di dries pretty instantly. Then we're going to use this little um, double leaf image. And we're also going to use this little branch of leaves right here. I like this stamp set. It has a lot of roses in it, it's primarily a rose set, I would say. And then it has a lot of images in it too. It's new to us that are demonstrators and also to Stampin' Up! customers. The catalog, the new catalog just became live May 3rd. So, um, a lot of these products are just being tried out by both demonstrators and customers. Okay, so here's something you also need to know if you're going to use Stays On Ink. Stays On Ink, um, you have to be really careful with your photopolymer stamps on Stays On Ink. So you have to clean them right away. So I'm gonna set this aside. Now this is our um, Stampin' Scrub. This is one way that I like to um, clean my all my stamps and I sometimes I use this one uh, this one is good too um, this comes just like this and then I put it in a stamp case that you can buy separately and this is great for just water-based ink but for this I want to make sure these stamps are or these stamps are really clean so I'm gonna start with my stamp and mist and actually this is also available in the catalog this is a specifically formulated to clean um, stamps. It's not stays on cleaner and I'm going to use stays on cleaner which we also have. It looks like this and I'll show you how to use that but in case I have to go back and restamp something I don't want to clean do go to that much trouble right now. So right now I'm just going to use the our stamp mist, the stamp and mist and clean these quickly and let them sit for a minute. Um, and if we have to restamp them, that's okay. But it's not recommended to leave stays on ink on your um, photopolymer stamps. It, it won't harm your red rubber stamps at all. And I, I'm i just saying that to caution you so that if you're a beginning stamper or, or even experienced stamper and you're just trying this and you don't know that, um, just so you're clear about that. And then when you do clean it with stays on, with stays on cleaner you want to um what was i trying to say yeah you don't want the stays on cleaner to sit on your stamp very long so i'll show you how to clean them when we get done with all of this hi pam thanks for sharing thanks so much i really appreciate it so i'm using that was called polished pink ink and these are the ink refills that we use to re-ink our ink pads and I'm using pear pizzazz as well. So I'm going to put a little bit, these are just our glass blocks that hold our stamps. Um, as you can see, I had these stamps mounted, but these are some extra ones I have, so that's what I'm using for this. You can use anything, you could use, even use um, anything that is non-porous you could use. So I'm just gonna take my aqua I keep wanting to call them aqua painters because the ones we used to have were called aqua painters and we'll do the rose first and I'm going I'm just mixing some water with this and then off to the side here a little bit I'm going to I'm, I'm squeezing my pen to get this to be a lot 
lighter in color, even lighter than that color. And then I'm also going to take, you could take a paper towel or you could take um, um, anything, a small, a wet, damp, small, wet, damp cloth. I'm going to bring in my little mat here that is wet and I'm going to just kind of dab this off. I'm using it as kind of, you don't want a lot of water in the tip of your pen. So at least that's the way. And then I usually check this to see how much color there is on this. And that's still actually a little bit more than I want. So I'm going to spritz out a little more water, squeeze it out here, and then wipe it off again on my little mat. And then I'm going to basically start in the middle, which is where the most color would normally be concentrated in a flower. And I'm going to just kind of I'm not going to color everything. I'm just kind of swishing my pen around. Now, please trust me, I do not consider myself an expert on watercoloring at all. So I'm just, um, but this is the way I like to do it. I just look at samples and then I kind of try to, I'm also now, I'm getting rid of any ink on my pen and I'm coming from the white space, the lighter space, into where the color is to meet it so I have a much lighter part. Now I'm leaving some of it white and that's sometimes really hard to do for all of us including me but that is kind of the look, look of watercolor so that's what I'm going for there. Now I'm going to go back to my darker ink over here and I think I might need even more color we're going to have to see yeah I think I watered that down too much so we're going to go back and add just a touch more ink so we have a little bit more color in there and again I'm dabbing off on my damp mat here and I'm going to see how dark this is yeah that's darker I think it could be darker yet but we're going to go with that and then a lot of times it's better to actually let it sit which we might have time to do that tonight let it sit a while and then come back with more color. So now I'm kind of going under the places where I think there would be a shadow. So I'm going under this leaf, but not all the places that I think there would be a shadow. I'm going to pull it up under here. Um, I think there would probably be a shadow under here a little bit. And then probably in back of this petal, like so. Now I'm gonna, again, get rid of the color for the most part, just wiping it on my pad quite a bit. And then I'm coming from the less color into the more color. Kind of like we do with blender pens. If you've watched me color with blender pens, that's a lot of times how I do it. But this is gonna blend easily too because of the water. I'm also stamping on, I stamped on um, watercolor, no, not watercolor paper. I meant to get out watercolor paper and I didn't give myself enough time. So this is um, shimmery white paper. You can watercolor with it. The best to watercolor is uh, watercolor paper, which we sell and that's a very fine watercolor paper. I just didn't give myself time to grab it. Um, I had a team meeting last night and um, had some things to do to follow up with that again so i think we're gonna just probably be a little shadow there and probably maybe a little shadow there and maybe even this whole petal there be a shadow and then now i'm going to get rid of all the ink again i'm going to cover come from here into the color so i don't want this to get too dark through there Okay, like so. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that for a minute. We're gonna to switch to green, and then we'll probably come back and do a little bit more color on that. So I'm going to just squeeze out my pen. Listen, anybody can do this. You don't have to be any kind of experienced stamper to do this. The only thing you just have to be careful of is not too much water, or you'll be drowning your flowers very quickly. So you just have to be Keep dabbing off the tip of your water brush, your water painter. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to do it a little bit more. And again, I'm going to do the same thing. After I get some ink going, I'm going to go in this corner and, and I'm squeezing to get more water out because I want this to be really, really diluted. Okay, wiping off again, going back to my leaf and not, I don't want it, my leaf to drown. So I'm keeping that tip. 
it's damp, but it's not putting out a lot of water because I'm brushing it off. Okay, so now before that gets too dry or anything, I'm gonna go back into my deeper color and then I'm just going to put a little darker ink where I think the shadow might be closer to the stem here. Come out like so, like so. So you can see it's starting to look watercolorish. So then I'm gonna go back to these guys. And again, I'm gonna wipe off my ink, come back so that I have very diluted ink. And I'm just gonna brush stroke this. If you're a watercolor expert and you're watching this, I'm sure you could give me many more tips <laughs> on what's the best way to do this. But this is what I do, so I'm just showing you what I do. So now I've dipped in my darker color for my leaves and I'm gonna go back in here a bit too. And I'm just gonna do a few streaks. Um, I like the streaky kind of look that you get with watercolor and you can't really get that with our blends markers or um, our Stampin' Right markers, you just can't get that kind of interesting water painting look. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do for my leaves. I'm going to let those sit for a minute. And once again, I'm going to squeeze out my water. Hopefully you can see that in the camera until it becomes clear. Because then I'm going to go back now to my darker color. And I want the darkest color of pink I can get here. Let's try this for a minute. Yeah, I think that'll be good. Now I'm gonna come back in again and I'm gonna do a little bit more shading here. Again, kind of streaky. And then that wasn't supposed to happen, so I need to blend that in just a touch. So there's quite a bit of water right there. And then let me grab just a little more ink and kind of blend that in just a touch there. Coming back here. Oh, Pam, thanks for sharing. Uh, well, Pam, you're, okay, so Pam's comment is, I like the way watercolor turns out, but it seems I go to blending pens most of the time. I do too. You know, honestly, I do too, because this, this takes time to sit and re relax and not be in too big of a hurry. <laughs> Which I rarely, um, you know, I, ha I rarely have that option. I've got some kind of wayward. I'll show you my my finished one that I took more time with. I'm trying actually not to take too much more time with this. And this is kind of splotchy right here. So I'm just going to go in basically with plain water on my tip and just kind of soften this up just a touch here. Because I want those places to be pretty light right there. So it does look watercolor. I think I'm going to just have to blend in some of that pink though. This reminds me of a rose my mom used to have that was deep red in the center and then it was and it had kind of white leaves on it. That's kind of what I was imagining when I was doing this. And let's let's put in a little more color under here too. Um let's do a little bit of deep red here and maybe just a touch here. And maybe even some more here and then I don't want this to get too There we go. I think usually less is more. Usually when I keep going, I'm not happy with it. And I think, why didn't I stop sooner? I want, I want just a little bit deeper red kind of right through here, right through the petal, the very bud of the rose. There we go. Okay, let's quit, Joanne. That's my real name. My nickname is Joey. So when I'm trying to get myself to do something, I try and remember to <laughs> call myself by my real name. Now here's a leaf I did yesterday. Um, so you wouldn't have to sit, me, sit here and watch me watercolor everything. And I'm gonna go back into this leaf a little bit and take just a touch more leaf. And if you have the time to do it, if this is a project you're working on and you're making several of these, you might want to do that if you have the time to let it sit and really dry and then because i'm purposely making this kind of streaky because i like that kind of a look hi donna hi diane thanks so much for sharing you guys are so sweet i just appreciate that so much 
Okay, so we're going in here. And then I might even grab a little bit more for this leaf so it looks like it goes with that leaf and just do a little bit of dark and darker here even because no two leaves are alike, right? For the most part. I'm gonna have a couple dark streaks through there. There you go. To me, that looks watercolory, so I'm happy with that. I'm gonna go ahead and squeeze out my pen so I don't grab it and think it's got, it's, it doesn't have color in it when it does. All right, so we've got, we're gonna go ahead and, I see the sun's coming in, sorry about that. I thought I had my, let me pull this little shade. That's not gonna help too much. Let me pull a little more. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to grab my stem cut and emboss machine, and then we're going to do some die cutting. Let me grab um, the dies we need, and we'll get this ready to go. This is called, if you're new to stamping, this is called a stamp and cut and emboss machine, and it die cuts, it die cuts your images as well as um, uses embossing folders to add impressions on your cardstock. Just to add a little more texture to your cards and interest when you use an embossing folder. And let's go ahead and I always have to kind of, oh, that's the wrong die. And I have to look at these dies for a moment to see what's what. So we're gonna put that there and then I don't have, we do have a new magnetic plate. I just ordered it. I know it was just new to the, this new catalog and I just ordered it. I don't have it yet. So for the sake of being accurate, uh, not messing this up on, on uh, Facebook Live, I'm going to grab some washi tape. And so much for getting it ready. And then, <laughs> and then having to, uh, do it again because I was holding on to the washi tape. Okay, then let's get our leaf dies out too. And we can do this all at once. So, I'll get this lined up. Uh, this was my swap card for my team. So, I did make quite a few of these and I was, you know, halfway into it and thought, did I really, you know, count the cost of watercoloring? A stack of cards and obviously I didn't but I don't I was just thinking that set really looked like it needed water coloring and so I went with this so I didn't do blends markers but you definitely if you like blends markers which are alcohol markers that blend perfectly you don't have to use any special ink with them you just use our memento ink um, and they come in a set of both a light and a dark, and you can get a lot of shading with blends markers, that's for sure. Um, I just chose to do water coloring for this because I don't get a chance to do it very much, and I do really love the way it looks. So, oops, we're getting everything turned around here. So let me get rid of this. Um, I had asked earlier today, I think it was either today or yesterday, I asked what, coloring medium most people that follow my page like to do by the way if you haven't followed and liked my page yet i'd love for you to do that too so that you don't miss anything and i get to see you on facebook live and then um so i put uh choices of watercolor blender blends markers um blender pens and what was my last one? Watercolor pencils, which by the way, you can use with stays on ink too, and with blender pens, and that's another nice way to color. And all of them are different and unique, uh, which is why we offer lots of different ways to color. Okay, so I've got this guy that, I think that rose turned out really pretty. I don't know, I know it probably looks like an amateur, <laughs> an amateur watercolor, but I am an amateur watercolor, so I'm okay with that. Okay, let me go grab the rest of what we need to finish our card. I have here a piece of Whisper White. No, I'm going to always call this Whisper White because we called it Whisper White for 
Oh, many, many years, but now it's basic white. Um, this is basic white thick, and it's five and a half inches by eight and a half inches, uh, scored up four and a quarter in the middle of it. Um, okay, so I've got this for our card. This is a bone folder, and it just gives your creases an extra tight crease to keep your card closed. Then I also have used a piece of basic white plain, not the thick, with the bumblebee embossing folder. So I went ahead and did that ahead of time to save time on the video, but um, I will show that in another video. If you are new to uh, my channel or you're new to stamping, you would probably want to see how that works too. So I do have, I will have an another video that shows how to do this but just putting this on like so and this is cut four by five and a quarter and that just kind of fits in there really nicely with about an eighth of an inch um, around the edge of the card so it is white on white but i always i sometimes like the way that that layers okay we're gonna put that aside Put our roses aside and then we're going to stamp our image now for this side of the card i used uh there are two dies in here that are edge dies one is like um these are little well they would be like in a notebook that has those kind of fatter plastic closures that oh that i don't i'm not using the right words like a spiral notebook but they're fatter pla white plastic this one is like a real notebook so that's how that cuts that side so that's how i use that and i just used my stamp and cut and emboss machine for that as well then we're going to take the stamps that i was telling you about earlier and this one is a red rubber stamp um we have both kinds of stamps in our catalog they both are great um Red rubber, obviously you can't see through, but I think sometimes it's a little more uh, dependable for for clean stamped images. But the photopolymer are so great too because you can see right through them. Now I just need to grab my ink for this. This is um, Starry Sky. And to open our ink pads, you just open like a compact. And then I usually use a heel in my hand because when they're new, they're kind of stiff. And then I don't push through with my fingers and get the ink all on my fingers. Then when I'm inking a stamp like this, that's a large stamp, I set the stamp down with the face up and then I ink from the top. It's just a little bit more foolproof than if you were trying to ink a large stamp like this because you can actually see where it's inked well and you know if you've gotten good coverage on it because with a larger stamp sometimes you're not sure i'm going to stamp this a little bit towards the top of this greeting i must say too i got this idea from a card i saw on demonstrator planning place and i don't remember the demonstrator's name this is not her exact card but it's similar it's where i got the idea for it um There we go. So one of the perks of being a demonstrator with Stampin' Up! is that you get access to a special Facebook group where there are thousands and thousands, I think 40,000 demonstrators on that site. And you see samples of everything all the time, all the new products, some, you know, some older products. So there's a lot of inspiration there. So if you like ideas and you're thinking about purchasing a big, stamp of stamp supplies if if you've got a list that's 99 dollars or more it's a great time right now to join stampin up um you you get 125 dollars for only 99 dollars with ship uh, with no shipping and just tax and then you also get a big assortment of all the new in color products so paper designer series paper um things like that. So if you're interested in that, message me and I can give you details about it and I can help you with that. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's grab, I think these are the leaves we did for tonight. That was another extra one. Let's go ahead and um, grab 
the mini glue dots. I'm trying to think ahead. I can't think ahead more than one step or I mess myself up. So with mini glue dots, I just turn them back on themselves like this and that's so I can actually press the paper product into the adhesive. So I'm gonna put a mini glue dot there and another one here and the last one. Hi, Shirley. Oh, thank you. I know it's so fun and you know oh hi Kelly I didn't see you come on it's it's I used to watercolor much more than I do now and it's only because of the time involved but there is no nothing that looks like watercolor except watercolor so I do love to do it when I can and sometimes I just have to make a special occasion to do it like my swap cards um, for yesterday and like I said, halfway through it, I thought, hmm, did I think this through that I was going to be spent making a stack of cards for this instead of just one or two? But I'm so glad I revisited it. It's just really fun. And then it's just very rewarding. And then I'll probably hoard my cards, but one of you will get one of these. So if you're sharing uh, the video, you get an extra ticket in the drawing to get the card in the mail. And for every comment, you get a ticket in the drawing to, to get the card sent to you that I'm making tonight. So now I'm going to take uh, my Stampin' Dimensionals and just, I'm going to go ahead and anchor down those leaves. I don't think I need three, but we'll go with two. Mini glue dots do a really, really good job of holding, holding it on. So let's see. I don't want it to be in the way of my words though. So maybe... No, I kind of want it to be in the corner. So it's going to cover up the bottom of that Y just a little bit. But the most important thing is that you don't go to the outside of your card. So it stays in, in nice and neat in your envelope. Okay, have I got something really cute for you? Hi, Chris. Yay, you joined me tonight. It's fun to see you. Okay, so this I think goes, it's in the catalog and I think it goes unsuspecting like under the radar so it's called for everything fancy sequence i couldn't remember the name of it so i had to shut my box to open it back up so there's green there's blue and there's pink or kind of pinky coral okay you have to see i know they're not going to show up in person i mean on camera like they do look in person but i'm still going to try and show you so these are the green ones and I'll just, uh, I'll grab my stamp and pierce, or my take a pick tool and show you. Okay, look at this. I, don't, I hope I'm getting in the camera. But can you see this? So there's like little teeny silver sequins. There's, here, let me try this. Some teeny silver ones, some, um, some gold ones that are also small, but not quite as teeny as the silver ones. Um, there is, um, these green ones, well, obviously there's green ones, but like regular green sequins, and then these flatter, these ones that don't have a hole in the middle, and then there's pearls, and then there's, uh, rhinestones. There's also rhinestones in here, like this is a little rhinestone, okay? Look at that. Okay, I know I'm one for bling. I don't know if all of you are girls that love bling, but, or guys, I guess, can love bling too. But, um, so there's that one. And then here's the pink one. Same thing, same variety. I'll try and get closer to the camera. I opened these and I just went, oh, and Steve was here. My husband was helping me unpack the order that they were in. We're gonna actually use the blue ones. And I just, I just gasped. Okay, we're gonna just, this is the way I usually like to work with things like this. I don't like to dig into that whole thing. It's just messy and things can fly out. So what I usually do is kind of separate these out just a little bit here. And then what we're gonna do, I was gluing with this and I didn't get it cleaned off as good, so. That's okay, we're gonna glue with it again. So I'm going to, this is, now somebody asked me the other day, what do you do with the take a pick tool? So the take a pick tool has this kind of rubbery end on it. It's kind of like, I don't know what you would call it. It's, 
it's just a rubbery it's a soft rubber like I usually tear off the if I haven't used it for a few days I tear it off and then and, and then I get a fresh edge on it so it's really sticky now sometimes it likes to keep coming out so then I just kind of push it back because it's easier to work with it that way. So I'm just pushing it back a little. And then it has this end that can screw off and it gives you a little spatula. I sometimes get under my stamps, like when they're in the, um, when they're in the case, sometimes these guys stick really hard and then I just get under them and get them up like that a little bit so I don't damage the stamp because the, the label is so sticky. And then this one I use for a lot of things. I'll show you how I'm gonna use it tonight. But I, you can take off your mini glue dots with this and stick them on your project. There's a lot of things you can do with it. So let's grab, um, yeah, Christy, aren't they pretty? Mary, they're just beautiful. Uh, Pam, they are just, st they're stunning. I just have to say, I know it doesn't take much to make me happy, but you know, Bling is, you know, is just the thing. It just may, always makes me smile. Okay, so let's grab, oh, let's do one. We're gonna put a tiny rhinestone right in the center of that little rose. So let's grab uh, one of these blue ones. I don't know if you can see me. Can you see me? Yeah, looks like I'm in the picture, okay. So I'm gonna take one of the larger blue ones and put it here. And then what I do with my tool is I hold it down because well, why do I do that? It's such a habit. I've just done it for so long. Um, and now I'm going to take another blue one, but this is a little smaller one and it's a little bit more shiny. We'll put this one here. So if I lift my finger up, sometimes that sequin will come with it. So if I hold it down with the point of my take your pick tool, it will hold that sequin in place. And this is liquid glue, mind you. So it's, it's going to move easily in the initial stage. Then, then I'm picking up. Can you see if I am I close enough that I'm going to pick up a little gold piece sequin then and I'm going to stick that down. Holding it with my finger and then just using my tool to keep it in place. Now liquid glue is white when you put it down, but it dries clear, so it won't show. Then I'm gonna see if I got a rhinestone in here. I Yeah, I do. There's a rhinestone, a little itty bitty one. I don't know that you'll be able to see this. And then put it down there, like so. That one, yeah, that'll be okay. It'll dry clear, so we won't be able to see that. But that is our card and our new sequins. I'm excited to play with these sequins and use them on a lot of different uh, things. You know, they're not self-adhesive, which is always nice to have self-adhesive backing on your, um, your project, or what am I trying to say, your sequins. But I thought they're so pretty they're worth a little bit of extra hassle so there's the this was the polished pink this is daffodil delight this is why i asked you today what do you like best pink or yellow so now that you've seen the project do you like the pink one or do you like the yellow one of the roses so let me know in the comments what you like better Pam, it looks like a dewdrop. I know, it does look like a little dewdrop on my flower. This one, I did actually use a gold sequin on it, and I used the gold here. I think because the rose was yellow, I thought the gold would look nice. But on this one, I did the clear one. But I also put a gold sequin on it, too, because um, gold, gold is good. Gold is kind of like bling. It makes everything better for the most part. So there's my two cards. Donnie, you like the pink, the pink, still the pink. Everybody's like, I said pink today and I'm saying pink again tonight. I always love yellow, <laughs> Chrissy's pinks. <laughs> Everybody's like, no, we, we would like the yellow rose if somebody gave that to us, but if we had our choice, we would take pink. Okay, now I'm gonna show you, I told you I would show you how to clean your stamps. So you're gonna take your um, stays on cleaner. And then this is old packaging because I've had this bottle a long time. I did just order a new one today, actually. So then I'm gonna go over my 
stamp. Am I in? I don't want to mess up my cards, so let me let, take my cards to the side for a moment. And I'm just going to. I had a flood while I moved my card, but I'm just going to go over the top of this. It has kind of. This is obviously looks really black um, because it's removing black ink, and I'm going to let that sit for a minute, and then I'm going to go to my next one. Now it will even. Stay in your glass box, and I have a little bit of ink on my block, but it comes right off. Now, it might stain your stamps a little bit. It will also stain your black rubber stamps, uh, but it, it doesn't harm your stamps. But you do have to get this that stays on cleaner off of your stamps. So I'm just saying don't let it sit. There were times with my red rubber stamps when I first started stamping with stays on um, that I would let them sit, and, then, um, and it doesn't harm that. It doesn't harm them, but you don't want that with your with your photopolymer ones. So that's the only thing about using stays on photopolymer. I'm just grabbing a whoops, not that. I'm grabbing a paper towel and I'm just dabbing off this. And you can see that it's actually quite a bit lighter, but that was the ink coming off because it works so well. So after I do that. I'm going to come back over here and I'm not going to let this sit. So now I'm going to come back to my, this side is damp, this side is dry on my, um, my stamping, what is this called? Gosh, I haven't used it for such a long time. Stampin' Cleaner? I don't know, something like that. It's in the catalog. So now I'm going to go back to my mist, my Stampin' Mist, and I'm going to spray this one more time. Just don't uh, let me get my cards completely out of the picture for now. And, and let's go ahead and clean this. And I'm rubbing it real good. I'm turning the stamp different ways. And then I'm going to dry it on the dry side. Now, there is still some staining on it, but I know that it's clean. I mean, if I'm not sure, if you're not sure, you can go back to your stays on cleaner and you can try it again and let it sit for maybe just a minute while you maybe go work on another one. So I'm going to take this one, I'm going to spray this one. Same thing, scrub it back and forth, up and down, all around, because you want to make sure you're getting off everything. And then before I put them away, I will go to the sink and I'll wash them off with soap and water to make sure I've gotten off all the stays on. And again, there's a little bit of stays on on my glass block. Okay, so, and then the last one, we'll clean that one. And you don't really need to be sitting here watching me clean all these stamps. But just so you know how I do it, and this is to protect your stamps. So you can use your photopolymer stamps with stays on ink and stays on cleaner but you may not let them set. You must not let them set with either the ink on it for very long or the stays on cleaner. I probably scared you off of using it with your photopolymer. You don't have to worry about your red rubber at all, um, but you do have to be sensitive to the, and I, I cleaned this one again, so I'm just gonna scrub that once more. I mean, I had put the stays on cleaner back on it. But now you can see, you can still see a tiny, I don't know if you can see, a tiny black bit on it. But I'm going to go, once I scrub these in the sink with soap and water, I know that they're really, really clean. So that's, I know that's a lot of extra work to do watercolor, but I don't know. What do you think? I think it's worth it. I just love it. I think it's beautiful. I enjoyed doing it, and I enjoyed showing you guys tonight how to do it. So, um... Thanks for joining me. Stamp and scrub, Donna. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And now I have to get right side up on my camera. So thanks so much for joining me. I do really appreciate your time. I know your time is valuable. And the fact that you would spend some of it with me, I'm just really grateful for that. And I love having your interaction. I really enjoy uh, seeing you on Facebook Live. And thank you for the hearts. Um, I just love see, being here with you guys and teaching you some things about stamping. I hope I was helpful. If you learned anything tonight, I'd love for you to put that in the comments. Um, or if you were reminded of something that you already knew, I would love to know if I'm helping you. And if there's anything you'd like to learn more about, um, I would love for you to let me know that too. 
because I can plan my Facebook lives around things you'd really, really like to learn. It can be something very simple or it can be something more complicated. Um, I'm happy to help you. I've been stamping for um, almost 20 years, 19 plus years, and so um, I'm, sure I, if, I'm sure I can figure out what you would like to know um, and help you with it. So just let me know in the comments if there's anything else. All right, thanks everybody so much, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.